Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HGTV Test here. I'm here in Amsterdam, not doing anything naughty, but attending the 2020 TV launch event by TV Vision Philips. And the theme for this year is going to be Ambilight because I think the company has correctly identified that Ambilight, their integrated bias lighting solution, is really their unique selling proposition. No other TV makers, no other OLED manufacturers on the market has Ambilight on the back of the TV to obviously not only increase the immersion but also reduce eye fatigue when you watch it in a dark room. So from that point of view, they have really put on a lot of banners at this event to try and sell Ambilight to the media and also to their customers. And I think as part of a trial, they are proposing to give a 30-day trial of Ambilight TV to just normal consumers and if you don't like it you can return it but I'm not entirely sure of the specifics of the trial whether it is applicable in the UK and which regions in Europe but certainly it is something that is on their mind they really believe in Ambilight and I'm a big fan of bias lighting as well I think that having integrated Ambilight is certainly a more elegant solution than having to buy something yourself to fix behind the television. So that is their theme. But in this video, I really want to focus on the new OLED TVs that has been launched or announced by Philips TV. And those are the 805, the 855 and the 865 series. There is no picture quality difference between the 805, 855 and 865. All of them are going to be using LG displays, WRGB OLED panel the fourth generation of P5 processing engine with Android Pie as well. Now, from the standpoint of design, the 805 will be using the same design as last year's 804, which means that the OLED panel is very slim, but it will be situated on a low profile stand with two feet picking out from beneath the screen. And then the 855 will have a central pedestal stand with a swan neck kind of a pedestal and the difference between the 865 and the 855 is that the 865 is even more premium there will be a leather cover in the front for those of you who are into leather talking of which there is also some leather component built into the new premium remote control now this remote control is going to be backlit and it has a flushed buttons making it look really quite modern and futuristic and at the sides and also at the back of the remote control there will be muirhead leather that is sourced from scotland to try and integrate into the whole premium european design philosophy that philips tv is exhibiting at this event the 2020 oled tvs from philips tv will be equipped with the fourth generation P5 processor. Now, if you know from my videos from the past, P5 consists of five pillars and it is still the same for the fourth generation. But what TP Vision Philips have added on top of the P5 processing is basically AI analysis. And what they are actually doing is to accumulate a series of images over the past year and put it on a database in Ghent which is where they are based and based on this series of images in their collection they can actually analyze the content and apply the appropriate processing to try and clean it up and present to you a better picture but that's the AI side of things and I'm still not entirely sure how it exactly works, whether there will be repeated software updates or it is just a series of database that is actually centrally stored in Ghent. And then over time, the TV will have to retrieve the database from the Ghent headquarters. But that is the fourth generation P5 processing. And then there will be three-sided Ambilight on the 805, the 855, and the 865 as well. There will be Android 9 Pi TV. And I think Android system, especially on Philips TV, has been actually very responsive and intuitive. I know Android gets a bad name because mainly of Sony TVs with their really underpowered processor from a few years ago. but. Philips is using a quad-core processor and it feels extremely snappy and it's very clean interface and the thing with Android is that you know you can 
get it updated over the years to get the latest security updates, the latest apps, which is fantastic. So it will have Android TV Pi and the 805, the A55 and the A65 will continue to offer multi-HDR support. By that I mean it will support HDR10, static metadata, HLG or hybrid or gamma, broadcast friendly format, which in fact, you know, if you're lucky, maybe you'll be able to see this video in HLG. And then HDR10+, Plus, open standard dynamic metadata format, and also Dolby Vision, proprietary dynamic metadata format. So alongside probably Panasonic, TCL, and maybe Vizio, I think Philips TV will be supporting all these major HDR formats. Now let's talk about HDMI 2.1. I think the status is unchanged from last year. So the new 2020 Philips OLEDs won't have full bandwidth HDMI 2.1 support. So the only HDMI 2.1 feature that will be supported on the HDMI 2.0B chipset will be ALLM or Auto Low Latency Mode, which will automatically switch your TV into game mode, which is the same as what was on the 804 last year. Input lag will be the same as last year, which is around 33 milliseconds in game mode. I think Philips TV have clearly expressed that they think 50 milliseconds or below would be sufficient for a decent gaming experience. One big news that came out from CES was filmmaker mode and when I attended the Ultra HD Alliance press conference, TP Vision Philips was listed as one of the supporters and from what Philips TV told me today, it will be coming, yes, they are fully supportive of the movement, but it will only be from 2021. They're looking at options to implement filmmaker mode on 2020 models, but it will be later in the year and it may be possible through a firmware update, but I think the decision has not been made yet. So that's HDMI 2.1, that's filmmaker mode. And then in terms of looking towards the future, Philips also, again, demoed their 8K 88-inch OLED. It is in a more ready form than last EFA, in that we have a design, everything is concrete, but they are still umming and eyeing on whether to release this to the market because they think that the 8K market is not quite ready yet in terms of the source. They are, realistically speaking, no 8K sources out there at the moment, not good ones anyway and then whether there is actually market demand for an 8K 88-inch OLED at such a high price. Probably we're talking, say, what, 20, 30,000 pounds, so from that point of view. But while talking about their future planning, we were given a glimpse of future technologies that Philips is actually working on, and one of it is Source Perfection 2.0, and what this means is that they will be able to analyze the image on screen and if it is of a low quality, especially heavily compressed one from YouTube, they will be able to pinpoint specific areas of the content that needs improvement. So the blue part will be pristine, high quality portions that won't be touched, but the yellow and the red ones will be, say, areas with more posterization or bending that can potentially be improved by decontouring and certainly in a before and after comparison you can see it working its magic this source perfection 2.0 so that's certainly something to look forward to another acknowledgement that philips tv have been brave enough to state at this event is that oled television is prone to permanent screen burn or burn-in. So as part of their initiative to become the best OLED maker on the market, they have come up with an algorithm which will analyze the logos and then dim it down slowly over time. And this will be an on-off toggle. And obviously in this demonstration, it is fairly drastic in terms of the luminous changes around the logo. I think the analysis will take around 20 seconds. but. If you let it work its magic, then it will slowly identify the high risk areas, shall we say.
that may cause a permanent screen burn on your TV and then you know it will slowly dim down that area in a gradual manner so that you don't actually notice it that much. But that is probably coming later this year, not on the 805. 805 has said as an elementary form, but I think the more advanced form will be coming later this year. I don't know whether it's possible through a firmware update, but certainly I think Philips TV is trying to investigate whether this is a possibility to be rolled out on older sets. So those are what I saw at the Philips TV event in Amsterdam. So I think they have some exciting products. I think you know it's still a disappointment that there is no HDMI 2.1, but Philips TV on record said that they don't think that there is many VRR sources out there. So. I mean, that's their stance, and I think this is the stance of Panasonic as well. I think, you know, if you're a gamer, drastically speaking, LG is your only choice, maybe to a lesser extent Samsung, but Samsung don't do OLED. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh.